Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. And today, we truly have one of the most iconic voices. We read your comments, and this has been one of the most requested voices. So, we give the people what they want. <laughs> today, we will be breaking down Bugs Bunny. And what's up, YouTube? Many different actors have portrayed Bugs over the years, but we will be imitating Bugs Bunny in the style of his original voice actor, the late great man of a thousand voices himself, Mel Blanc. Let's break this voice down. Component number one, the vocal cords. Bugs Bunny has a fairly neutral pitch, sometimes only going slightly higher than normal. It isn't too high, nor is it too low. This might come as a surprise, because it certainly seems like a very high-pitched voice, but this is actually a trick of resonance. The later components we will discuss will demonstrate how we get this brightness, but the actual pitch is fairly neutral most of the time. You can hear this as I hold out a note without the other components, and then add them back in. Uh... Uh... Uh, eh. You can hear how the note stays at the same pitch, but I shift the resonance, making it brighter, and therefore sounding much more like Bugs Bunny. There are some times when his voice will go higher, however. While Bugs is typically calm, cool, and collected, there are moments when he gets angry. When he does, his voice typically tends to go into a higher pitched voice, but one that still has a lot of strength to it. Rabbit season! Now scram! But other than those moments, his voice is simply neutral pitched, but bright. So how do we get that brightness? Bring in component number two. Component number two, the larynx. For bugs, we are going to have to really raise the larynx. You want this voice to be as bright as possible so feel free to make that larynx go as high as you wish. In addition to this, there is also some twang present in his voice. This is a narrowing of the area epiglottic folds that gives us an even brighter sound. Check out Voice Breakdown Episode 9, Voice Lessons to the World Episode 77, and Quick Singing Tips Episode 33 for more information on twang. Eh, what's up, Doc? Component number three, the tongue. Continuing on our journey to make this voice as bright as possible, we want to have the tongue help us do this as well. When we raise the back of the tongue, we get a brighter sound, and when we lower the back of the tongue, we get a darker sound. For bugs, let's raise that tongue. Component number four, the soft palate. To get this voice to be bright, we need many components to work together, including raising the larynx, utilizing twang, and raising the back of the tongue. But there is one more component. Last but not least is the soft palate. There is a ton of nasal resonance in this voice. We need to be having a significant amount of sound going into the nasal cavity. We do this by lowering the soft palate. You can place your hand lightly on your nose to get a sense of the vibrations happening in there. The good news about all of these components is that they tend to go together. When raising your larynx and tongue, lowering the palate happens as a natural byproduct. Combine the larynx height, the twang, the raised tongue, and the lowered palate, and you will have a Bugs Bunny sound. Ain't I a stinker? Component number five, articulation. While those first four components will get your vocal quality to sound just like Bugs, we need to get this articulation just right if we really want to have a good impression of him. Bugs has a quasi-New York dialect that is some combination of a Brooklyn and Bronx dialect, according to Mel Blanc. This means a few things. First, it means Bugs' articulation is non-rhotic. This means that R sounds are affected. There is a type of vowel known as an R-colored vowel. These are vowel sounds followed by er, like air, r, or, or ear. When these occur, they are typically dropped off or turned into vowels. You realize this means war. Notice that war was not pronounced war, but war. 
Also, when there is an er sound in the middle of a word, it might sound a bit more like an oi sound. The classic example of this is instead of saying 33rd and 3rd Street, it becomes Thoidy Thoid and Thoid Street. And 33rd and Thoid Street, New York, not New Jersey. In addition to this, you will want to focus on Bug's TH sounds as well. When there is a voiced TH sound, th, such as in the words there or that, Bugs will often substitute these sounds with a D. This would make those words dare and dat. No way! There is no way I do that! Oh. Component number six, prosody. Prosody refers to the melodic or rhythmic patterns of a voice. These patterns usually reflect the personality of the voice. For Bugs, his personality the majority of the time is nonchalant, calm, confident, but also playful. As a result, his melodic and rhythmic patterns should not be frenetic, but fairly controlled. At the same time, he is still upbeat. The pitch changes in his voice will certainly have variation, but not in a way that is manic or uncontrolled. Think of being a confident trickster, and you'll have his prosody just right. This excludes the times when he gets angry or fearful. Then you might hear much more frantic melody and rhythm changes. What a maroon! Eh. Feisty, ain't they? Let's recap. Component number one, the vocal cords. We want a fairly neutral pitch, perhaps on the very slightly higher side. The only exception to this is when he gets angry. Component number two, the larynx. We want this voice to be bright, so raise the larynx. Additionally, let's add some twang. Component number three, the tongue. To help aid in that brightness even further, raise the back of the tongue. Component number four, the soft palate. Lower the soft palate to allow for lots of nasal resonance. Component number five, articulation. Make the speech non-rhotic, dropping or vowelizing your R sounds, and replace D for voiced TH. Component number six, prosody. We want our melodic and rhythmic changes to be calm and easygoing, yet playful. Thank you, Doc, for watching New York Speech Coaching's Voice Breakdown, episode number 41. Be sure to check out future episodes of Voice Breakdown, the show where we teach you how to imitate some of the most iconic voices. See you next time. What's up, Dad?